everybody is pretty much everybody, including you. I've been in the studio a few times mm -hmm. with you. Um, are using hard drives and disks and so on. How has that changed the process? Or has it changed it for the for it's, better or it's worse? It's changed it sometimes for for the best, sometimes not so great. Um, I used tape all the way up until probably three or four years ago because I liked the way it sounded. Um, certain things, particularly drums and bass, went to tape that way. Uh, went, went to tape in a way that I, I li it was pleasing to the ear for me. Then what happened was tape became so scarce that uh, uh, using a tape machine and tape used to be the, the rock solid way to make records. It never failed. The tape machines always rolled. The tape always worked great. What happened over the years, as tape became more and more scarce and machines became more and more scarce, those machines started breaking. The tape became more uh, became less reliable. So then I don't want it anymore because it's not very reliable. Yeah. Plus, uh, the technology is such that they've figured out a, uh, pretty much how to make the digital hard drive sound a lot like tape. Yeah. It's pretty hard to screw it up now. So. As soon as that became the norm, uh, as soon as that became the, the way, uh, the sort of the standard of uh, uh, practice of business, so to speak, um, uh, I went to using hard drive completely. Yeah. It seems to me now every musician out there is, is somewhat prolific, whether it's GarageBand mm -hmm. and Pro Tools mm -hmm. and so mm -hmm. forth. And I know that a lot of the musicians you work with, all the guys in Incubus are somewhat mm -hmm. familiar with it. Mm -hmm. Does that help you or slow you down in the whole process when bands, not a yeah, yeah. specific band, are crafting at home, does that help you or hurt you? I think overall it's a good thing. I think the fact that, you know, and whether it's good or not doesn't matter. The genie's out of the bottle. Everyone's doing it. Uh, where I run into trouble is uh, it's, it was the same way when people had little 8-track tapes where they had enough money to go into the studio to make a 24-track demo. They fell in love with those demos, and all you were trying to do is trying to beat the demo, so to speak. So that's exhausting. That is a terrible way to make a living, and that's a terrible way to go through the day. So I, I, I encourage the artists or guys in bands, people in bands I work mm -hmm. with, um, to make demos and, and to work those songs out, but do them very simply. Yeah. Because we're going to change everything. I don't give a shit whether it's got you know, great production. I don't want to hear that stuff. It's just stuff we've got to get rid of. Um, and... Uh, you know, uh, the almost the same technology we use in the studio is pretty much what most people have on their computers at home for the yeah, most part. It's pretty scary. As a matter of fact, one of my daughters, my youngest daughter, um, Hannah, one of her buddies, uh, ha they have they have uh, school computers. Well, he basically hijacked his school computer to make his first album on the gar on GarageBand. I thought that was awesome. You, you gotta know, love it. That's great. Most bands, particularly in today's age, they need to be more independent. They need to take more initiative themselves. But the truth of the matter is um, that they're probably not going to get a chance to make a record with an experienced, world-class producer like yourself. If you were giving advice to people out there that are going to maybe watch this interview, and this may be as close as they get to be able to pick your brain, mm -hmm. what would you tell them about making their records while they're working their way up the ladder to get to a date with Brendan O'Brien's calendar. I, I would say the, <clears throat> the 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 number one thing you have to remember when you're doing when you're taking that step, making your first album, whatever it is, you have got to remember that it is not you are not recording a live performance. Does it matter how good your band is at the club on the weekend? Does it matter how good you are in front of 500 people, opening up, opening up for whoever? Making records and, and and recording songs is an entirely different medium. They can't see you, so you have to approach it. Um, you have to approach with that in mind. Do not set your stuff up and just play your set and expect it to be okay. It's a different thing. You've got mm. to, you have to go into it, you have to exaggerate the vocals a bit, you have to make sure the guitars are w way more in tune and uh, just little things like that. Um, I can't tell you how many times I've had um, uh, people are starting out and they're gonna make their CDs, whatever, and it's, they're just recording a live version of their set. It doesn't work. Take the time, work on the arrangements, uh, if you hear a little part that sounds kind of cool and kind of weird, make it happen two or three, th two, two or three times in the song. It's stuff like that. Yeah. Uh, so I think if they can remember that it's a completely different thing than, them, than playing amongst themselves or in front of people, I think that's the, the best advice I could get. You know, when I think about a record, the, the record needs, is perfect, right? Every note could be perfect. It doesn't perfect. have to be perfect. It's, it's perfect, just a different so thing. It can, all, you know? it can be exactly the way you mm -hmm. want it, whereas a live performance... 
is in the moment. And so it's right. interesting when bands that have made records with great producers mm -hmm. want to do a live record. It's ironic that they try to take the live performance yeah. and polish it up to the other many, it, it, funny world we live in. I've done about. records <laughs> with, with, uh, with a band, uh, I can think of one in particular, that they wanted, they were a, a, an incredible live band. And they felt like they had not captured that energy on records yet. So I agreed to do it, and I, I was, that was my main job, trying to capture that energy somehow. But I didn't do it by just going to recording their live show. We did other things to try to get that energy, and mm -hmm. you know, recording things differently, recording the you know, uh, vocals doubled here and there, you know, just whatever. But it's, it's just a different medium, and keep that in mind. How much did it mean to you to win a Grammy Award um, mm -hmm. from your peers in the industry? Um, you know, it was great. But before I won an award, I was rejected about 20-something times. So it wasn't as great as it could have been, maybe. <laughs> if that uh, makes me small and a uh, no, uh, petty human being, then so be it. No, but it's funny. I'll tell you a funny story. Uh, I, yeah, in the winter. Oh, I've, been, I've known Brendan now for, what, about 15 years? Yeah. And we go out and we play a little golf from time to time. And uh, I can actually remember now that I'm thinking about it, mm -hmm. you... The, I was talking about how many times you'd been rejected. Right. And now we kid about... Uh, Grammy Award winning That's right. producer right. Brendan O'Brien hitting the shots that. for sure. the fans. Yeah, so, called that. uh, you know what? I'd sure like to get. So good. I got a new it's nickname so The Magic Man. Now you see me? No, now you don't. don't. This is for the fans. This is for the fans. We talk about the fans frequently. For the fans. Do we not? Come on. So, one of the fans. This is for the fans. Oh, so we're going to do not fun stuff. No, now. no, I think that, that's it. We got a three point get until you okay, half cool. hour, and that's, that's good. Awesome. I can't wait. I was now. going to ask blah, you. Blah, 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 blah. Yeah, yeah. We're, I thought we were having fun. Okay, okay. That's good. I think we got the producer <laughs> stuff covered. Brendan, yeah, no, let me do the old side up. Yes. Okay, hold on. He's got something here. Uh, can, can we get um, who you produce for? Just He'll do all that. I'll, I'll give you a little. Okay, I'll, I'll give you that, a little yeah. intro in that because Brendan, the yeah. Magic Man, doesn't like to brag. Magic Man will, uh, well, yeah. doesn't like exactly. to brag. Thank you. So there you that's go. producing. That's yeah. pro see, he's so good that, at that. That's producing. He's exactly. good at this. He really is. I want to thank my good friend, Mr. Brendan O'Brien. Okay, you got to pause and then say start the sign off because otherwise it's That's killing you over here. All right, my name is Steve Rainey. This is my friend Brendan O'Brien. I want to thank you today for Happy joining to us, Brendan O'Brien, to talk about rock. And, uh, and sharing the magic with us. Glad to be here. <laughs> All right, thanks a lot. We'll see you later. Try, try, try to understand. He's a magic man.